Hi all, welcome to my channel. So in this video, we will see an important concept called Windows, right? When you are processing unbounded data, or streaming data, we are going to use this concept, right? There are different types of Windows available based on your requirement or use cases like fixed sliding or session window. So we'll see each of this window type with detail example, right? In case of batch data, right? So you have all the elements already available in the P collection beforehand. So on top of those elements, we are going to perform series of P transformation, right? So in such case, we call that as a single global window. So, right, because you have all the elements already available in that window, right? So it's a single window. You can perform any type of P transformation and you can name it required output. So what happens in case of unbounded data or streaming data? Streaming means continuously coming data. So, so in the P collection at, event, at any given point of time, there won't be all the elements available since it is a continuously coming data. So that the source which is pushing the data into P collection, it is con continuously updating that data into P collection. In such cases, it will be al almost impossible to capture all the elements right in a single window right so in a single global window right like batch data right because the data is still coming in such cases this windows concepts are very much helpful to process unbounded data right so for example let's say the data which is continuously coming into p collection now you will have to apply some group or combine operation on top of the data right so which is continuously coming it is impossible right because you won't be having all the elements at any given point of time right so in such cases what you have to do you have to divide that available elements into windows based on the timestamps associated with each of the element available in the p collection so you can divide that window based on your requirement or use cases like fixed window right or sliding window or session window even you can also try to implement custom windows based on your requirement okay now let us go to our demo slide directly to understand each of this concept with examples okay right now for example let's say I have a IOT devices or a application which is continuously sending data to my P collection so let us assume this is that P collection which is continuously sending data. Now it has sent almost six elements in first five minutes. Okay. Then in the next five minutes it has sent elements from element seven to element eleventh. Right. So now the window duration is five minutes. So each window has been divided into five minutes duration. Right. Now I have four windows. Right. Now I can apply either grouping or combiners, any kind of aggregation on top of each of this fixed window, right? Then it will emit that output per window basis, right? Now this is called a fixed window. That means I've been dividing that entire P collection into a chunks based on my start timestamp and end timestamp that is five minute duration each window right so this is called fixed window right so to to use this transformation this transformation will take one input parameter that is fixed window duration you will have to pass that parameter as an input so for example let's say if you have to divide that fixed window with five minutes duration you can you can pass like five into sixty five is a number sixty in a, is a seconds so five into sixty right right that means it is five minutes this is fixed window right so in the next case we'll see sliding window right so let us try to this this is a bit tricky right now let us try to observe this diagram i have one window of five minutes duration right now i would like to start my next window which is coming up next right at every two and a half minutes duration. So my overall window duration is five minutes, but my next window should start exactly after two and a half minutes. 
so it would look like this right that means this window duration is 5 minutes now my next window starts exactly at two and a half minutes right in the same way my third window also gets started at exactly two and a half minutes duration that means these all these windows are overlapped this first window is the second window is overlapped with the first window third window is overlapped with the second window that overlap duration is two and a half minutes that entire window duration is five minutes right so how it is helpful why to have this overlapping windows or sliding windows for example let's say if you have to perform some running averages right or running totals on top of continuously coming data in such cases this is very much helpful for example here in, in our case let us say this window duration is five minutes my overlapping period is two and a half minutes that means it will try to calculate that running average for five minutes duration and those elements which are getting updated at every two and a half minutes right this is how this sliding window is very much helpful so this particular transformation will take two parameters as input so one is that window duration for example in 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 this case it is five minute and also that overlapping period in this case it is two and a half minutes right so like that you can use sliding window based on your requirement we will also see examples right in demo the third case session windows right how these are helpful how these are useful based on your requirement we'll see for example let's say so there is a user right he has logged into some website and is performing some activities right so it'll, it'll, it'll perform certain activities and now he is ideal for some duration let us say it's a 10 minute duration that means so his activities are available within this window so he has performed two activities so now we are receiving two two elements right now he is ideal for 10 minutes and next he is again performing some more activities now he has performed three four activities that means this window duration is not fixed at all right? completely depending on his activities right so that means so he'll perform certain activities and he'll He'll keep ideal for some time and then he is performing few more activities like that so now you can see this ideal time is always constant so it's 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes is performing some more activity these activities are not constant right he may perform uh, multiple activities or series of activities right for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes even 30 minutes also but the ideal duration is 10 minutes so so this session window basically takes only one parameters that is this gap that is this ideal time because so in for example let's say if user activity is non evenly distributed then in such cases this session window is very much helpful so you will pass that ideal duration as a input argument then the rest of the time duration is acting as a session window right the duration between each window is a this ideal time only right so i hope you are clear about all this concept now we'll directly jump into the demo okay so i've been using this same apache beam jupyter notebook okay so let me go to that code i've already written some code to demo all this concept right so yeah what i'm trying to do so because i don't have any streaming source available to demo these concepts so for that so what i'm trying to do i'm trying to use some bigquery public data set to mimic our streaming input data right so i'm trying to use this london by skills data set and there is a table called cycle hires that means so we have uh, data available for almost uh, few years so but to demo this concept i've been uh, using uh, this data for only one day that is 2017 okay and 0101 so january 1st 2017 okay so so let us try to examine this data then we'll come to this code and we'll try to 
demo this concepts okay let us go to my bigquery window right editor so i have this query which has been used in my code which i've already shown you so i'm trying to read only two columns that is rental id and start date right now what i'm trying to do i would like to count number of rentals for a specific time duration right if you see this data is evenly distributed you can see uh, the rentals available and each minute almost so it's at midnight 12 so 12 2 12 3 12 4 something like that so i have 100 rows i've just limited these rows rows to 100 to simplify our demo for easy understanding okay now i would like to pass this information and i would like to capture this information into my p collection and i'll divide that p collection into fixed windows okay now let us go to the demo okay you can see i'm reading the data into p collection table row and then i'm just trying to convert that data into dictionary format rental id okay and also start date so this start date is available in the date time format right so now in order to assign timestamp to each element within that p collection you will have to use this timestamped value transformation so i've already discussed regarding the, regarding this transformation in my previous video i will try to provide that link right with this video description just go through that okay so what it will do it will it will read that data and it, it will try to assign timestamp to each of the element based on this start date okay right so now what i'll do i will just apply this fixed window transformation okay where i would like to divide each window into five minute duration 60 is a second five is a number five into 60 it's gonna be five minutes right now i will have window with five minute duration whatever the elements coming within that five minute duration then it will try to capture those elements and then it will try to perform some transformation okay then i am passing this information into this transformation you can see this is the transformation print window in info right so now let us try to examine this transformation okay this is that transformation so i have been using again uh, composite p transformation what what it is trying to do it will try to use this pardu okay so it will try to read that element which is coming from this okay transformation window that means we have multiple windows right with five minute duration it will read each of the window and elements with respect to that window right and then what it will do it will try to format that window information along with the number of elements available within that window right okay you can see this is our one of the function already defined here so what i'm trying to do by using this function i'm trying to print window information that is start time of or start timestamp of that particular window and also end timestamp of that particular window then i'm i'm just trying to call that function over here right so it will just print window start time and end time and also it will emit number of elements within that window right this is my composite transformation you can see so it is just reading this p collection or window then it is counting number of elements right and then it will pass that information into this pardo right this pardo will convert that information into human readable format where it will try to print window start timestamp window end timestamp along with number of elements right so this is how i've been using these functions right now let me run this code now you will see that fixed windows and calculated count per window now you can see this is the output emitted right so you can see there are four fixed windows right because we have 100 rows based on the timestamp itself it will so it has divided that entire p collection into four fixed window with five minutes duration and you can see the number of element per window right so in the next case we'll see sliding window right so let me comment out here so you can see sliding window i already told it will take two parameters one is overlapping period that is 150 two and a half minutes and the 
second parameter is window duration that is 300 seconds or 5 minutes that means my window duration is 5 minutes my overlapping period is 2 and a half minutes now let me try to print this value how it look like okay now this is the output this is bit tricky let us try to understand this in clear right so now you can see my first window started around 23 hour 57 second sorry 57 minute and 30 second and it ends at 12 to 30 that means this window duration is 5 minutes if you see the next window immediately starting here at 12 that means there is some overlapping that is two and a half minute it ends at 5 that means 12 5 if you see third window again it starts at 12 to 30 again there is an overlap of two and a half minutes so if you see this ends at seventh minute 30 second if you see the next window get starts at 12 pi again there is an overlap of two and a half minutes like this always there will be overlap between two windows right if you see the number of elements per window you can see there is an increase in the count when you compare with your a fixed window right you can see there is an increase in the number of elements per window why because because since it is a sliding window or overlapping window if you have the elements coming in the window one also available in the window two also due to that overlap that means elements are duplicated across multiple windows in this sliding window concept that's where you could see there is an increase in the count of number of elements so like this this sliding window is very much helpful this is very much helpful in case if you have to calculate some running averages or moving averages right this is how this sliding window works now again it has 10 windows right so with two and a half minute overlapping okay so in the next case we'll see session window right let me come in this let me try to print this output okay for that I will I will be using the second query so let me comment out the first query use the second query why because again let us go to the our big query window because for session window I have already discussed right the data right our elements should be unevenly distributed that that should not be evenly distributed you can see this data right this is unevenly distributed if you, if you try to observe these timestamps these are unevenly distributed right so in such cases session window is very much useful so that's why i've been using the second query now let me try to print this output how it look like okay session window this already already told it takes only that ideal duration as input 30 into 60 60 is a second 30 is a number 30 into 60 that is 30 minutes ideal duration it will consider 30 minutes as the ideal duration then it will try to calculate the count of elements per each session window now you can see that output so now we have 10 session windows you can see number of elements per window this window is uneven you can see the start date and end date so it is not in sequence so it again completely based on the timestamp of a element right the distribution of a timestamp of an element so it is an uneven distribution so you can see uneven windows right you can see the first window has 62 elements second window one third window two fourth window has 22 elements uneven distribution so like this this is very much helpful right so i hope you are clear about all this concept right so this is very important concept especially when you have to process unbounded data so in many use cases right you will have to especially streaming data processing or unbounded data processing you will have to use one of this concept so based on the requirement or use case you can also implement custom windows right so time permits we'll see them in upcoming videos so thank you thank you very much for watching this video we'll meet in the next video